Well, hello everyone. And today on the bench, we have a Yezu FTDX560. Now, I've always kind of liked these older Yezu radios, and I've always wanted the uh, FT40141B. 401, but this one kind of showed up this weekend. A friend of mine called me. And he had bought out some stuff from a uh, Silent Key estate sale. And this was one of the pieces that he uh, had picked up. He hooked it up, said it came on, but no transmit, no receive. So uh, he asked me if I was interested in it. So when he brought it over and I took a look at it. And you know the radio is dirty, but it's complete. It has the speaker and the uh, Yezu UD844 microphone which is the rare one um, you'll see plenty of the YD844s but not many of the uh, UD844s around so when he told me what he wanted for it I couldn't uh, turn it down so I went ahead and picked the radio up so let's get a little bit closer look at it. So you can see the radio is not in bad looking shape. It just needs some good cleaning. Um, this is uh, upper lower side band CW. No AM in this particular model. I think uh, AM came out in the 401 series. But they did not have it in the uh, 560, 570 series. It's 10 uh, through 80 meter. It has JJW and WWV um, crystals installed in it. We have a uh, marker for 25 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz. External receive, transmit, um, fast flow, and all for the meter setting. Your uh, meter readings. Radio has box. RF gain, mic gain carrier, and your uh, preset plate and loading. Now this particular radio has 20 tubes in it. Three of them are uh, the two finals. It uses 6KD6, and then you got one driver tube. The rest of it is uh, all tube. I think there's four transistors in this uh, radio. We'll get a good look at the bezel. You'll see, you know, it's just needs some good polishing around the chrome on the bezel. Looks like all the paint is still on it. Look over here on this side. You can see everything looks real good. Knobs are dirty. Front face plate's not scratched up. VFO knob looks good. No rust around the uh, mic and headphone jack, just dirty. So just an excellent front panel on it. Meter looks good, face plate, you know the glasses need cleaning. And you can see the dust over there in the corners around the analog dial so a good cleaning will really make this radio pop even the paint on it looks real good a little spot there look like something was spilled on it that'll probably clean off speaker's not bad looking grill's gonna need a bit of removing and, and washing See if we can get it all back in one color. That'll be a little fun to do. The uh, radio has an aluminum trim ring around it, so we should be able to polish that back up. 
you get that looking good use some never dull on it and the microphone is not the best looking as you can see uh, a lot of paint gone off of it the head looks pretty good you know the head is uh, removable on this you can see uh, a little rust on the chrome that will have to be took off and uh, cleaned out the um, the ring around it you know it does have a lot of nicks and scratches on it we might be able to polish some of it out but you know you'll never get it back uh, perfect looking and uh, someone's taped up the bottom of it and the way these microphones work is that there's a switch that sticks out the bottom and when you set it down it's in the you know normal mode when you pick the microphone up that switch engages and it goes into transmit without having to push the PDT, PTT. so uh, since he's already done some testing on it and we know it won't blow up when we uh, plug it in so uh, let's turn it in just give it a test and see what we do have but before we turn it on, uh, you need to make sure that the accessory plug is in. And there's two pins um, in here that has to be jumped. I've already verified it. I took the plug off and opened it up and the two pins are jumped. Also, uh, this is the uh, VFO plug. And you have to have, I think it was four and five. No, three and four has to be jumped so I had to put a jumper in it see a little rust back here on the uh, the panel I'm gonna get some Neville jelly and take that off so it can kind of clean it up but you see we have a lot of controls on the back and a lot of it's for the uh, mock circuit and you have your bias adjust circuit and your needle um, S meter adjustment here comes with a uh, grounding lug on the back SO239 doesn't look too bad alright we'll go ahead and uh, turn it around hook the speaker to it speaker uses an 8 ohm speaker RCA plug and we'll put some power on this thing Okay, we'll power the rig up. Good sign that the uh, meter lights come on. I noticed the bezel's a little loose here. A loose screw on it. I'll have to get that. I'll have to take it off anyway and give it a good clean and probably pour the whole face plate off and clean it up. Right, we have static. We put it on 25 kilohertz. And we have nothing. No receive whatsoever. Also, when you turn the pre-select, I don't hear the, uh, the anything changing. And what you would do when you go to set these radio up, whatever band you go to, you peak the pre-select for maximum noise. And it's making no difference whatsoever. 20 meters. Nothing. 15 meters, nothing. Since we already own the uh, 
40 meter band we'll go ahead and just set up the IFR and we'll go uh, 7.2 hundred yeah. and uh, we'll generate so we'll generate it down set it for 1 kilohertz tone Set it for about minus 70 dBm. We'll go 100 kilohertz either way because you know the dial could be off. And there is nothing. We'll go ahead and max out the generator. And I'm slightly hearing a tone in the speaker. And let me verify it's the generator. Yep, if we're coming from the generator. And regardless of wherever you put the VFO, I still hear the tone. All right, we'll go ahead and uh, pop the top off and the uh, the bottom of it, and we'll have a look and see if we see anything that's uh, out of the ordinary. We'll look inside the radio here, and you know it really doesn't look that bad. We do have some. Uh, I can see that rust that I was talking about on the back of it. But as you can see, we have a lot of tubes in this radio. Single side band filter does not have a CW filter installed. You can see the rust back here on this back platform. But, uh, it looks fairly clean. Not too bad at all. Now, if you notice, a lot of these tubes has the shields over them. And if you go to, uh, you know, start working on one of these, first thing we tell you be very careful because you look right here on top of the PA cover, danger of high voltage. And they're not joking. There's high voltage in this radio. Again, you know, a lot of tubes in here. But a lot of times when you get a radio it doesn't do nothing. Um, you can go in here and pull tubes and reseat them. You know, uh, pull the relay, clean the contacts. This radio is going to have two relays in it. It's got one in the back for the, uh, it's the antenna relay. And then you got one here that runs various different functions with the uh, external VFO and, and different things. But when you go to pull these... Uh, metal shields out you know be careful um, you're just not going to grab it and pull the whole tube out there is a strip of wire that runs up inside in between the tube and the shield so you want to be very careful and not snatch that uh, that piece of wire out I mean, it's just a flat little strip it's easy to break so be careful with that Alright, we have the radio fired back up. The generator is on. You hear that noise in the tube right there? That's the indication of a dirty tube socket. A 
again, you know, when you're doing this, you do it one hand. Only touch the top of the tubes. If you see a tube with a plate cap on it, like inside the PA compartment, stay far away from it. Trust me, it will kill you. Seems like it is very dirty. Let's see if we can get this one out. Took the power off, unplugged the rig. small screwdriver and just open this uh shield up just a bit and what I'm doing I'm holding down on the tube and you'll look how this is uh, lapped together on the, uh, the metal shield. You twist it the opposite way so it loosens up. And you see you can pull it right on off. You can see how the uh, metal shield is just wrapped around it so you would twist it this way and that way it kind of opens it up. Six B A six. And you might be able to see that. Let's see if we can get a little strip of metal sticking up right there. Just give the uh, two pins a little light spray with some deoxid. Just clean them with a brass brush. And we'll spray the two, so uh, two pins again. Sort it back down into the socket. in and out a couple of times yeah stay right back on Plug it up, turn the unit back on, see if that took care of that noise. I'll have to clean it one more time. But that's not what's causing the no receive, no transmit. I just want to go through and clean one of them just to show you. But let's see if we can figure out just what is going on with this radio. So when tackling a, uh, a radio like this for the first time, you know, familiarize yourself with the uh, block diagram. And there is two 
sections in this block diagram that we're going to be interested in to start with. One is going to be the local oscillator. And depending on what band you own, there'll be a different set of frequencies here from 9.52 all the way up to uh, 35.52 megahertz. The next one is going to be the uh, VFO. Now I've looked in the uh, schematic and this VFO runs between 8 to 9 9.5 kilohertz so these are the two sections that we're mostly going to be interested in because if either one of these is out then there's no transmit no receive condition at all so uh, we need to take a look at these and just just see what we have there before we go any further and you know what kind of gives me the idea of this is that you know I'm hearing a tone all the way across the whole band and it's not changing with the VFO so that tells me something here may be the problem so here we see our local oscillator and it runs on V2 6BA6 we see two auxiliary crystals and then our nine crystal wall bands and right here beside it is our VFO circuit. Now the VFO circuit is transistorized. There are two FTTs for the oscillator and the buffer. And then the uh, VFO amp is a regular bipolar transistor. And you know you kind of look at this to figure out what it is. We have a control voltage coming up here. Um, this is probably going to be for the external VFO out and this one you see we have a resistor with a coil around it I'll zoom in on that just a little bit yeah we can see R, R412 and L401 together so that should be our VFO output and it should be a coax cable and this one will probably be a coax cable also so we need to look at those two sections and see if there's any uh, signal being you know coming out of those two sections at all we're looking now at the bottom of the radio and here we can see our band switch that goes all the way through this is the uh, PA switching down here and then you have several other sections in here but the section we need to concentrate on is right here if you look you'll see some crystals mounted here in between two wafers and as you rotate the uh, the switch it brings these crystals in and out for each band now I've looked down and found the lug and we'll go to this crystal we just need to check one crystal um, I did go through the whole band and I could hear the tone across every band so what we're going to do here is just uh, check this one crystal right here and just see if we have our local oscillator working at all and we're just going to do that with the uh, oscilloscope or ground and we'll connect to one side of the crystal and then we'll have a look at oscilloscope and as you see we do have a signal on that crystal and it is at 7.8 megahertz uh, yes megahertz I think I said uh, kilohertz earlier but yes this should be running megahertz so we can see our signal is there so we know our local oscillator is working and if I change bands we should see this uh, drop out and it does now we could go through every crystal and check it like that I'll clip on the second one there we go 
All right. Well, it's another crystal. They're kind of hard to get to in there. They had the scope probe on real good. So we can see our output here from the VFO. It comes down and goes straight across. Let me pull up the next schematic. So then, you know, it goes into uh, PM1, which is the grid of the 6B a6 VFO buffer tube so you know with that we now know that that is the cable that we need to check the signal on to see if the uh, VFO is working so we got our VFO knob on the front and here is the uh, VFO control boards inside this metal can and we can see three connectors here and this is the VFO output because we can follow it and it comes right down here to V2 so we know we're checking the right cable so let's put a scope probe on this to see if there's any output on the uh, VFO now as you can see looking at the scope we have absolutely nothing there was nothing at all coming out of the, uh, the VFO. So I want to check and see if we got any input voltage. It's 4.6 volts. We have 9.21 volts here. And we shouldn't have no voltage out because we have no signal out. Now there's only three connections to the VFO and since we have no output at all we need to go into the VFO uh, box and look at the board and see if we see anything that's uh, you know, out of the ordinary or, or whatever. Okay, there was four screws to remove and they were painted white. So it looks like it's never been into. So can't we, uh... Get this little cover off. drop the camera down so we can take a peek inside of it and there's an inside view of the uh, little VFO board you can see it's just a little small board in there it's not very big at all get some light down in there so y'all can see anything that I'm seeing There's our oscillator transistor, it's an FET, and that's our buffer transistor, and our amplifier. The amplifier is bipolar, so you know the circuit's going to flow this away, that's why we know that this is the oscillator. You also can see two big uh, air cap capacitors here have our main tuning coil I see a red wire coming up from the uh, VFO capacitor it comes to this point here to the coil I'm interested in uh, checking voltages on the uh, amplifier to see if there's any uh, voltage there okay let's check some voltages on that amplifier and see what we get <laughs> nothing there 
Nothing there. And there's nothing there, so there's no voltage at all on that. There's also no voltage feeding the buffer. And no voltage feeding the oscillator. And we do have voltage in. Yeah, as you can see, we do have voltage in, but there's no voltage at all on either one of those uh, components there. I'm hearing some uh, hum in the speaker, so this thing is probably going to need recapping. Got remember this radio was built in the 70s, early 70s. So she's probably going to need a good cap job. Hmm. Let me uh, zoom you in on this here and let you see this. Turn the unit off. You see we have a blue wire right here. There's a white wire right here on the output. But look at our red wire. It is broken from the circuit board. Or from the uh, feed through. Let's grab a soldering iron. And see, can't we solder that wire back on? That would definitely uh, cause a no output issue. Again, you know, radio's unplugged and turned off. tack that on for right now I'll go back and do a good loop and I was looking at the wire the wire was straight it wasn't even looped around the uh, the feed through end and that's probably why it broke off I'll go ahead and uh, Connect our scope back up. Plug it in. Turn the unit on. Mm-hmm. Now we have output on the VFO. Eight point six 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 seven seven megahertz. Should go down to about eight point five. And 
Okay, I'm right at 8.94 megahertz. the uh, IFR back to generate that's about a minus 120 dBm and it is still hearing the signal okay I got the antenna connected to it and 40 meters and as you can hear we can peak our noise that the uh, clarifier works and it does you can barely hear the other station she's talking to but that is working We can see our calibrator's not working on 25 kilohertz or 100 kilohertz. And if you notice, you also see how quickly the uh, receiver goes down. So you have to hit the pre-select. You can't go but maybe 100, 150 before you have to uh, hit the pre-select on these. Now I'm not going to test the uh, transmitter at this time. As you can see, uh, we still have a lot of work to do on this. Um, before we even start on the transmitter, all these caps are going to have to be replaced. Um, as you can see, they uh, they did use Rubicon, but I am hearing some hum in the speaker, so that's telling me we got some probably some weak caps in here. 
maybe some more solder joints that needed to be uh, freshened up and get all the tubes out and get those clean go ahead and clean the top board and take the cabinet off get all this cleaned out get some navel jelly and so can't we clean that uh, deck up that holds the transformer now underneath it is completely uh, clean underneath of it I mean you can see how shiny all the metal work is I mean it's just looks very nice under this radio I mean, I'm just amazed at how good it does look and you know there's no telling uh, how long this wire has been broken so it wasn't properly soldered on to start with when you got a feed through you need to wrap it around it then solder it and they just had it linked up against it and soldered you know them connections like that are going to uh, going to fail but yeah we got quite a bit of electrolytics in here to replace one down here under the uh, PA Five right here. You can see a couple on the uh, underneath the uh, main board here that has to be replaced. A couple right there, and there should be about I think the six underneath the uh, power supply board that are big caps also that's going to have to be replaced. Okay, you can see uh, the three main filter caps see the rust down the rust down there on that deck it's going to have to be cleaned off circuit board is not too bad it's going to need a little cleaning but you can see all the electrolytics down there some electrolytics up there in the regulator circuit balance modulator circuit I'm going to have to get them out get all the tubes out get all the uh, tube sockets tubes cleaned up get them put on the uh, tube tester and check them out I haven't even bothered to open the uh, RF deck up yet because I will tell you there's a pair of 6KD6's in here and before we uh, even attempt to transmit on this all those caps are going to have to be replaced and the reason why Again, 6KD6s. Um, go online, look at the price of them. They are expensive, so we do not want to do anything to uh, make these tubes any weaker. We need to go through the bias circuit, make sure that's right. There's caps in the bias circuit needs to be replaced anyway, so we want to make sure all that is right before we uh, even check the transmitter to see if it even works. So you know, the DX560 is listed as uh, 500 watt input PEP. Now, so just so that you don't get confused that this radio will not do 500 watts PEP output. It's an input we're talking about. You should see between 2 and 250 output on this radio. Another thing you'll notice about the 560 is there's no cooling fan on the PA at all so that's something that we'll have to come in and modify this rig to put a cooling fan in it again 6KD6's are not cheap and I do, really do not want to go in and change the setup and put something different in it I'd like to keep it you know as original as possible so we'll look at a way to uh, install a cooling fan to help uh, keep those uh, 6KD6's cooler so there you have it the uh, Yaesu FT-DX 560 nice old boat anchor um, I'm going to go and get some caps ordered for this thing and we'll go ahead and get those replaced after we do a, a good thorough cleaning on it, we'll 
pull the chassis off with the front panel off and go ahead and get everything washed up get these knobs cleaned up all the controls cleaned and lubricated go in here and uh, oil all the uh, tuning capacitors get them back up I noticed the plate is a little stiff load control feels good pre-select feels good but the plate is a little stiff but you know there's always a lot of heat back here in the uh, PA compartment so that capacitor's probably got the greases dried out in it so with that you know yeah we got our work cut out for us but I think we got a real good platform here to work with uh, I was surprised to see the uh, the radio come to life this easily you know just some simple basic troubleshooting and uh, we was able to locate the problem and get that taken care of so it wasn't hard at all anyway uh, as I get time we'll get more uh, into this I still have a lot of work here in the shop and you know working on my own equipment is always put on the back burner uh, customer stuff always comes first but sometimes you know you got to do stuff for yourself and uh, get some enjoyment out of it which we enjoy the repairs anyway but anyway uh, leave your comments down below and click the show more tab to links to our website and to our patreon site and we'll catch you in the next video see you now